travel across America with me. Welcome to Oregon, the Beaver State, the 33rd state, 10th in land area and 27th in population. Travel Oregon. I want to take you on a drive across I-84 on the eastern edge of Oregon. Put on your seatbelts for this gorgeous ride through the mountains and a little bit of history to accompany this trip. We're headed to Washington State, but first, Oregon. It's time to chain up. Well, maybe not today because there's no snow on the ground, but when you see these signs, you know you might be in for a ride in the wintertime. At the turn of the 19th century, the Oregon country, to which Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Western Montana, Southwest Wyoming, and Southern British Columbia were referred, was a bonanza for fur traders and fishermen. Traveling down the road, we pass Farewell Bend State Park. I'll tell you about that as we continue down the road. New York furrier John Jacob Astor's Pacific Fur Company and the British charter Hudson's Bay Company ruled the commerce for years, providing much needed goods and services to trail riders and settlers in the Pacific Northwest. The Treaty of 1818 between the U.S. and Britain established the 49th parallel as the official border between the United States and British North America. The treaty met a great deal of resistance from the prospering Hudson's Bay Company, whose owners did not want to relinquish financial control of the lucrative region. The Oregon Treaty of 1846 permanently established the 49th parallel to the Pacific Ocean as the boundary. We have traveled adjacent to the entire Oregon Trail, crossed it at many places, walked and driven on many of the actual sections across Oregon, including parts of the Barlow Road segment. One of the most creative Oregon Trail Museum lies east of Baker City. The National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, operated by the BLM, sits atop Flagstaff Hill near the famous, cut down now, Lone Tree, a one-time trail marker. In August 1848, Oregon was the first formal territory west of the Rocky Mountains and became a state in 1859. It is home to nine federally recognized Indian tribes with long, rich heritages. If you have traveled in Eastern Oregon, tell us about your adventure in the state in the comments below. The scenery is absolutely grand. As the grass is starting to grow, the bare mountains are starting to show more signs of life. The snowmelt is continuing on the peaks in the background. We try our best to keep the windshield clean, but it's almost impossible in springtime. This is also home to Hell's Canyon, La Grande, and Baker City, where you can visit numerous historic points. An epic of human endurance, the historic Oregon Trail began in Independence, Missouri and led early settlers westward more than 2,000 miles. This was the route of the first Oregon colonists and those lured by the western gold fields. Trappers and traders blazed the trail as early as the 1830s.
It served as a main supply road for Western military posts. You can learn more about the entire Oregon Trail in my books. Off and on the beaten path, the unclassic road trip, Central and Western editions. And then, and in that, you will learn why the Blue Mountain Crossing Oregon Trail Interpretive Park is the most astonishing, astounding, and heart-gripping of all the Oregon Trail stops. Though many died along the route, most completed the journey, boosting Oregon's population. In 1850, the population of Oregon was 12,093. Ten years later, the population had increased to 52,495. Have you subscribed yet? If not, why not? Could you do that right now? Thank you. And if you have already subscribed, thank you. Comments from the pioneers include, Just threw my mirror away some while back. Why I couldn't bear the sight of my face no more. All over with creases and splotches. Another wrote, Festering fly bites. Skeeters thick as soup. I declare the Yellow Jackets got more of our provisions than we did. The 547-mile trip across Oregon was the final leg of the long and perilous journey. From Idaho, the trail crosses the Snake River and enters Oregon, near present-day Nysa. The sturdy but worn-out travelers would turn back over their shoulder at Farewell Bend to say so long to the Snake River that had led them through Idaho. You can retrace their steps at Farewell Bend State Park. Break test area, oh my! We're approaching our final descent down into the Columbia River Valley. They give you plenty of warnings, including how fast you should be going on this downhill spiral. It's a chain up area. Truck escape ramp, two and a half miles. Last warning, six miles, 6% 6 downgrade ahead. Here we go. Viewpoint. I think this whole thing is a viewpoint, don't you? What do you think of this trip? Put your comment below. Runaway truck ramp. It's a half a mile away. We won't be needing that. How much can you curve on this highway? I feel we're going to make a complete circle, don't you? Oh, here's the runaway truck ramp. And it looks like quite the curve coming up as if we haven't been curving enough. Oh, we're gonna be going the other way now. Okay, I get it. See the chain fencing to keep rocks from falling into the roadway? And now, another runaway truck ramp? Well, I guess that's helpful. I just saw it.
The sign says it's a half a mile away. I hope we don't see anybody use it. Looks like we're almost to the end. Yay! Well, finally, a straight stretch ahead of us. Chain removal area ahead. Well, we don't have to stop. We never put the chains on, thankfully. Do we have chains? Have you ever chained up your car to go across a pass or through something like this? We'll be exiting here to catch Interstate 82 to head north into Washington. I really need to clean this windshield again, don't I? Now we're crossing the Columbia River into the state of Washington. Welcome to Washington, the evergreen state. I don't see an evergreen anywhere, do you? But we will. Wait till you see the upcoming videos on Bastion Island and Stahican. They're going to make you want to get to Washington as soon as you can. Be sure to tell a friend about my channel and classic road trip, house shoes on the ground. I'm in the RV, people. I don't need to have on tennis shoes or flip-flops. It was nice to settle in for the night at the KOA in Ellensburg and have a barbecue dinner in downtown Ellensburg with friends. And I do promise to take you to Rocky Mountain National Park. It just might be delayed for a while.